so good. Love these guys. Um, so we're in this this thing of of looking and examining uh, prayer over these next few weeks. We we only have a few more weeks left. I'm really excited about what we're going to be uh, finishing up with. I think that God is really going to speak uh, just some really cool things over these next few weeks. And uh, I'm really excited about next month with, uh, like I said, Radiant coming through and uh, Pastor Caden coming and preaching because he's awesome. I don't know if you guys have ever heard him, uh, but he, he's an incredible, incredible speaker. And uh, I know he's got a word that's going to be just awesome. So I'm really looking forward to next month as well. But uh, if you guys would go ahead and turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Um, so, I was trying to think. There was something I was going to say, something I was going to do, and I can't remember now. It's all good. <laughs> um, so we've been in this series looking at the elements of prayer. Does anybody know what we talked about last week as we were looking and, and examining prayer? These elements of prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We d definitely did. Pray without ceasing was was in there. That's this concept of of praying and and constantly being in an attitude of prayer. Absolutely. Um, anybody know the concept that we look at, looked at? We looked at what prayer was. We looked at pr what prayer was not. And if you didn't have a working definition of what prayer is, we gave you uh, a definition of prayer. We were redefining prayer. Does this all start to come back a little bit? I know your brains might be melted from fall break and just hanging out. Yep, that's what it is. So <laughs> anyway, um, you can go back on our YouTube and check that out. Actually, this week's didn't get. Anyway, whatever. Uh, you can find it there. Um, but uh, what we're going to look at tonight, so last week we looked at what is prayer. We redefined what prayer was. This, is where, uh, this week we're going to look at how we pray. And a lot of it, I'm going to be honest, sounds super, super similar. Do you want to know why it sounds super, super similar? Well, because both of these passages, remember last week we were in Philippians, right? The church of Philippi, who wrote to the Philippians? Paul. Paul wrote to the Philippians, absolutely. Well, Paul is writing to the Thessalonians uh, here in First and Second Thessalonians. And so he's writing this letter, and where we're at is at the end of this letter, the same way we're at the end of Philippians. And so a lot of it is going to sound very similar. Why? Because when Paul wrote First Thessalonians, they were kind of in a similar situation to how the Philippians were in. So when you hear this, it's going to sound very, very similar, and it's on purpose that it's similar, because I think if you're going to define prayer, and then you're going to look at how to pray, they should be very similar. Am I right? Yep. So, um, so yeah, so it was written to the Thessalonians, and this is what happened. The, the church in Thessalonica, because that's what it is. Everybody say Thessalonica. Thessalonica. Now say it th five times fast. Yeah, yeah, you can't do it. I can't do it either. Oh, 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 okay, no, nah, I'm kidding. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's very, very difficult. Anyway, you just always put me on spot. Anyway, so the church in Thessalonica um, was hearing how the young church was, was being persecuted. And so what he's doing, again, at the end of the letter, the same way at the end of Philippians, uh, he was uh, encouraging them. This is what he's, he's telling them to do. He's telling them to persevere. And then he's like, hey, I'm really grateful for you. Look to the person next to you uh, or the person behind you if you're in a row by yourself and say, I I I'm thankful for you. I'm grateful for you. There you go. Awesome. See, this is how Paul felt about the Philippians, and this is how Paul felt about the Thessalonians. So let's go ahead and let's read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Uh, it's already up here, ready to go. Um, it's going to be very, very short tonight as far as the, the, the scriptures that we're using. But this is what it says. All right. Everybody say, rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice always. Pray continually. And give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 
Let's go ahead and let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that it is consistent, that, that your words ring true no matter uh, what book we are in. Lord, I thank you that you reveal new things to us, even when passages may sound similar, even when it looks like it's saying the same thing over and over and over. Lord, I thank you that you bring just a freshness and a newness uh, about your word. And Lord, I pray that your word tonight would just speak to each of these students wherever they're at, whatever they need from you. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would uh, just just speak to them in a very real way. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. So, before we get into this, I want to know something. And this is theoretical, so, so I don't, like, actually answer. But how do you pray? I want you to kind of think about this. How, how do you pray? Do you, do you pray alone? Do you, do you pray with your family do you fold your hands and, and close your eyes really tight because you get distracted like I do? Because that's what happens to me. See, a lot, of us, a lot of us figure out a formula to prayer. Do you guys ever try to figure out the formula to prayer? You guys try to figure it out? Well, if I say this many Our Fathers and this many Hail Marys, then I'll somehow be able to, to hear. God will, will be able to speak to me. That's a Catholic joke if you didn't know. Um, anyway. Everybody, okay, cool, awesome. Don't don't tell your Catholic friends. Uh, anyway, I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't know where we're going. But see, here, here's the thing. A lot of us try to figure out a formula. We try to figure it out. Okay, I need to pray with my family about this thing, but I can only pray by myself on this because nobody can really know what I'm praying about, right? Like, you ever been there? Right? I can pray about this. Uh, I, I, I got I to gotta focus in, or this is one that I can kind of drive in prayer. Obviously, keep your eyes open and keep it on the road, all right? All right, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. new drivers, new drivers, I'm in. So uh, you guys can, can pray, but, but this is one that I'm going to just kind of do other things, or I'm going to listen to worship music and pray in my head. You guys ever been there? Has ever been there where I'm just going to listen to music and do that? A lot of times we, we try to figure out the formula for how is this prayer going to get met? How, how is this need going to get met? How is, how is this thing that I'm praying for going to happen? We, we try to figure out a formula for how to pray. And how to pray is important, right? Knowing what prayer is is important, but knowing how to pray is everything, right? It's so important as a matter of fact, and we'll get into this next month with the Lord's Prayer, but it's so important that the disciples actually said, hey, Jesus, how do we pray? Teach us how to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray because we want to know that. They could have asked him, how do you raise people from the dead? How do you turn water into wine? That'd be a cool party trick. Like, they could have asked him all of this stuff. But what they asked him for was how do we pray? Knowing what prayer is is important, but knowing how to pray is everything. It is so key. And so we read this, to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Does that sound pretty familiar from last week to, to what he said the, to the Philippians? Almost exactly, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look. Last week we looked at what is prayer. What does prayer do? It, it leads to rejoicing and, and it does all of these things that we, we talked about. We're going to look at how we're supposed to do that tonight. So this first point, if you guys are taking notes, I want you to grab this from, from when it says rejoice always. We worship in prayer. This is how we pray. We worship in prayer. We worship in prayer. You see, Paul's attitude at the end of this was one of joy for the Thessalonians. Remember, that's why I said to tell your, the person next to you how grateful you are for them. He was grateful to God for the Thessalonians. This letter, as we read it, we can look at it and know that he was thanking God for the Thessalonians. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So it's not necessarily that he is worshiping in prayer when he says rejoice always, right? This is a command. So I don't want to get it twisted because a lot of times when I was reading it, I was thinking like, man, this really isn't about prayer. But at the same time, it is. You see, Paul's attitude was one of joy. The church, 
you guys as believers, if you, if you know Jesus, if you love Jesus, if you call him and you, you pray regularly, this is something that you do. The church can't let the present problems create an atmosphere of groom, gloom or pessimism. We have to pray for optimism. We have to pray optimistically. Joy, thanks, and praise ought to characterize who we are. Who we are. So here's the other thing. We honor God and we rejoice in him through prayer. There's a reason to find joy even when there's trials, even when there's tribulations. Paul here is really wanting you guys to, to see and to understand how important it is to rejoice always. We worship in prayer. Everybody say we worship in prayer. You see, this is the reason why we have prayer and worship nights. You guys, you guys catching me? Because in order to create an atmosphere for prayer to be able to talk to the Lord, in order to do that, you have to create an atmosphere of worship to him. It's important in prayer to worship God. Why? Because it focuses, this, uh, it focus, uh, focuses us there in on how we are supposed to pray, who we're praying to, who we're talking to. It's not just another conversation. A lot of times people want to boil down prayer and say, hey, you're just talking to Jesus. That's exactly what it is. Absolutely. Don't get it twisted. Like, don't act like you have to come to the Lord in a certain way. But a lot of times people will overshoot it a little bit to the point that they're like, yo, what up, G? Uh, so I got this and I got this and I got that. And like, no. Know who you're talking to. Understand who it is that you are, are before you know, if you believe that God can really change the atmosphere for the situations in your life, then we should probably treat that with a little bit of reverence and, and worship in, in how, we, uh, how, we, how we interact with, with him. So here's the other thing that I want you guys to grab onto. He says, pray continually right here. So pray continually. We listen in prayer. Everybody say, we listen. We listen in prayer. A lot of, uh, like I said, it sounds exactly like the same message. I know it does. I know it does. But I want you guys to really grab onto this thing that we move from redefining prayer of what is prayer to, to, to how we're supposed to pray. So this is, this is important to us. We have to... We have to pray continually. We have to have an open heart. We have to have an open mind in how we are, are, are talking to the Lord. Does that mean that we pray and we speak to him and, and, and we're supposed to close our eyes the entire time? Does that mean that when we're driving or when your parents are driving that you're like, hey, it's time to pray mom or dad or grandpa or grandma or uncle or whatever. And now, it's, now it's time to pray and we're going to close our eyes and... <laughs> no, nah, I don't I don't I don't think it is. You see, as we pray continuously, we begin to take time to listen to God's voice. We take time to begin to hear from him. It's important it's important that in prayer, as it's a conversation, that we're not so boneheaded to think that we're the only ones who have stuff to say. That's why I love moments like, like in worship. That's why I like being able to kind of sit in those moments because you never know what God would want to speak to you in, in that moment. You never know what he would want to, to say to you in that moment. And, and if we're always talking, if we're always bringing requests, if we're always coming through with things that we're just constantly talking and constantly bringing things up, it's not really that, that two-way conversation. We're not really listening. Imagine if you had a friend and all they ever did was talk, talk. Do you guys have friends like that? Yeah. Some, some of them? And all it, <laughs> but all it is is about them. Always about them. It's always about their problems. They're always wanting you to help them with, with their issues. They're always wanting you to, to, to give them advice. But then the minute that you're like, hey, actually, I'm kind of going through something or I'm kind of walking through something, they're like, yeah, 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 but, but me. 
but me, but me, but me, constantly. And I'm not saying that those people are like in, inherently like just bad people. It might be a little selfish. But that's kind of how sometimes we can get in prayer, especially around Christmas time, right? Especially, right? Because you start to, to go to God with your wish list. Man, I, I really would like, man, I'm, I'm about to turn 16, so I'd really like a car. Lord, if you could give me a car, that'd be cool. They got those, they got those, all the chips that are coming out now for, for all the technology again. So, Lord, if you could just bless me with the PS5, it'd be amazing. Lord, if you could, if you could do this, and, and then you get, like, all the way down the list, and then you're like, oh, yeah, by the way, would you, like, be glorified or whatever? And, and would you just, like, you know, give me my calling and, and all... Right? This is, the, this is the stuff that goes to the top of the list. Right? And so many times we are so busy talking and talking and talking and talking and talking that we never actually tune our ears to hear what the Lord has for us. If you're having a conversation with, with the Lord, if you're having a conversation with Jesus, if you're having a conversation with God, you're in prayer. Who, is most, who, who has the most important thing to say in that conversation? Exactly. It's not me. It's not me. We listen in prayer. Here's the last thing. I know I, I told you I'm blazed through this thing. Because it's basically the same message from last week. It's essentially the same thing. We affirm in our prayers. Prayer should, should always seek to uplift and encourage people around us. Always. If we pray with ulterior motives, if, if, if we are looking to pray so that we can inflict harm or pain on people or, or put people down or whatever, you guys heard gossip prayers, right? Yeah. You know, you ever been in a room with somebody and they're like, hey, would you just please pray for Betty Jo because she's, she, she's going through something really tough right now. And, uh, and I, I know I would never say this in a normal conversation, but we're praying, so I'll tell you. And then it just turns out to be, like, just gossip, and that's the only reason that they were even saying anything to begin with. We have to affirm in our prayers. Paul, in both, in both the Philippian church and in the Thessalonian church, was affirming his people, was affirming the young guys and girls to, to be affirming in their prayers to, to continually give thanks to the Lord. Prayer, uh, Paul used his letters to make sure to pray in thankfulness for those around him and those he led. Sometimes it's really easy for us, especially who has a job in here or has ever had a job? Yeah? Yeah, volunteering counts too. Sure, we'll do that. <laughs> just so we can get more people in on this. Have you ever had somebody who's in charge of you if you're a volunteer or a boss, and you're like, man, I just, I just can't. I just can't get over this person. Right? Yeah. I just can't. I just can't get over this person. And I... I feel that way in coworkers, and then maybe if you guys ever grow up and you have people who are actually under you, maybe you have people under you now, like as far as like, uh, as far as like workers, like people who answer to you. But like, I had I had coworkers, but then I also had people who who answered to me because I was kind of a supervisor. It was really funny, actually. Uh, quick story: uh, my brother worked at a, a parks and rec department for like two years. And then I came in, and in six months, I was a manager, and he wasn't. He got really mad about it. If he ever comes to visit and you ever meet him, you should ask him about that because it's always funny to watch his reaction. Anyway, but what I watched when I worked at that place, what I watched was people who were supposed to be leading people, people who were supposed to be encouraging to other people, even coworkers who just constantly put each other down constantly tear each other down. You're nothing. You're this. You're that. You do this wrong. You do that wrong. Be affirming. When you pray for people, don't pray for them to change because they're so wacky and they're so crazy. 
Don't pray for them to be like, man, if you would just, God, if you would just change them, if you would just change who they are, if you would just make sure that they're not the, the way that they are, then that would be amazing. But what would happen if we would give thanks to the Lord for the people that were in our lives or the people who were around us? How would that, how would that change our perspective? Knowing what prayer is, is so important. Knowing how to pray is everything. It's crucial for us to know how to pray because of what it accomplishes. You guys grabbing onto this? Prayer is important. It's literally how we talk and how we communicate with the Lord. It's so key for us. Prayer is important, and now it's up to you to decide how important it is. You guys grabbing onto this stuff? I hope so. <laughs> I know I went uh, quick, but I want to go ahead and get back into worship and, and just reflect. So if you guys would bow your heads, close your eyes, I want you guys to really, really focus in. Tonight, if, if you would look at the situation that you find yourself in, whatever situation that is, if you look and, and, and you say, I'm not really praying the right way, like, like my heart is in a certain way, it might be off kilter, like maybe you find yourself praying for people, but you're asking God to like take the things that God's wanting to use out of the, does that make sense? And maybe you're praying things out of people that God wants to use. Maybe you are praying things and you're praying in a way that's just a wish list to God. You're not actually listening to him. Maybe you don't realize who God is, how powerful he is, how amazing he is, and you don't never take the time to worship him. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you guys to really grab onto this fact that Jesus, that God loved you so much that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, to die on a cross for your sins. And the people around you who maybe you find struggle in knowing how to pray for, he died for them too. But what's so cool about Jesus, what is so cool about the Lord is that in other religions, there are so many formulas and rituals and ways to talk to their God. And some of the times they can't even talk to them on an on a everyday basis. The cool thing about Jesus dying for our sins is not only do we have a relationship with him, but we can actually pray and talk with him every single day. It's like the best 24-hour hotline that you could ever ask for. And we have that. So tonight, if you were, if you would say one of two things. One, man, I don't even know who Jesus is. I don't have a relationship with him. I just need to get my relationship right with Jesus. I need to get my relationship right with the Lord for whatever reason. Nobody's judging. Nobody is looking around. Nobody is going to take names or anything like that. But if you would say, I need to fix my relationship and get my relationship right. Would you just please raise your hand? Just slip your hand up. I need to get my relationship right with the Lord. Thank you. I see that. I see that. Thank you. Two, here's the second thing. If you do have a good relationship with God, you feel like, man, I, I'm, I'm really tight. I feel good. But maybe prayer is something where you just can't seem to find the, the right way to pray. Maybe you've been praying, but your prayers have been ineffective because of the ways that you are going about it. Maybe you only see God as some sky genie who will grant your, your wishes, give you everything that you want. Tonight, if you would say, I just need to reposition and reevaluate how I pray. I want to pray differently. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Say, I want to pray differently. I see that. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for each and every student that is here tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just be able to, whatever situation that these students find themselves in, whether it's it's not even having a relationship with you, whether it's not knowing who you are or where to where to go, I pray that you would just comfort them, that you would wrap your arms around them. I pray that they would be able to hear from you tonight. I pray that they would know that they are loved, that they are cared for, that you adore them. Lord, and I pray for those of us who do have that relationship, who call you our, our Lord and Savior, but maybe our prayers haven't been with the purest of hearts. Maybe we talk too much in our prayers. We don't listen to you. We don't hear your voice. We're not trying to because we're so consumed by the things that we have. Lord, I pray that in either one of these camps, Lord, that you would just begin to, to speak reassurance over these students that they haven't stepped too far away, that they're never out of bounds, that you are always there ready to accept them, to hold them close, and to, to start to speak those things. I pray that each and every student here would just align their hearts to be able to hear from you and the things that you want to speak over them, because I believe... I believe that you are wanting to speak callings over these students. I believe that you are wanting that you are wanting to speak reassurance over situations that they may find themselves in. Or I believe that there are things that you want to deal with tonight. And I pray that these students would just press in and see what it is that you have for them. We love you. We thank you. We are so excited that we get to step into your presence once again and worship you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for watching our video today. Before you go, if you'd like to stay connected with us, you can follow us on our Facebook and Instagram at LPYouthAZ or find us on YouTube at LifePointYouth-Prescott Valley. For more information regarding service times and events, you can find us at lifepointaz.com slash youth or email us at youth at lifepointaz.com. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.